Welcome back guys on the channel. I have to say that I'm uh, extremely excited right now. First of all, uh, Djokovic beat Nadal. So as a Serbian, I feel uh, very powerful and uh, good luck to this guy in the finals against Tsitsipas. Secondly, it's my birthday, believe it or not. So hopefully we're going to drink uh, many more Jean Beams and uh, get so many uh, more of these videos. And the uh, third and uh, probably most important thing is that most of you ask me, Maya, how should we play Smith more? Can you make the video? This is not going to be like one of those professional videos about the Smith Mora for professionals, for uh, high rated players, but it's certainly going to be very interesting and uh, you will for sure enjoy so much. So my intention with this video is to show you the basic plans and ideas uh, about um, uh, e4, c5 and how should you treat the Sicilian opening. So Smith Mora appears after a second move d4, c takes d4 and when you sack the second pawn c3. Uh, nowadays you have so many guys who like to apply this opening. Uh, on lower and medium levels, uh, it scores really well. Yes, you can play. If you ask me if you can play this in bullet, in blitz, in rapid tournament games, you can play everywhere. Smith Moore is a good opening. Uh, with this lecture, I'll just try to explain you the basic ideas, main plans, and uh, to show like uh, four model games that I found uh, extremely important for understanding this opening properly. So let's get started. Enjoy. After d takes c3, you just take and they go knight c6. You play knight f3. In order to understand the concepts of this opening, you just have to know that our light square bishop always goes on c4. Then you go short castle. Uh, well, your queen goes on e2 and rook goes on d1. Even if you're the worst Smith Mora player, you probably know this. If you didn't, then uh, right now and after this lecture, uh, you should be familiar with the following things. So you go, you go with the bishop on c4, you go with uh, short castle, uh, you go with, uh, apart from short castle, queen e2, and your rook from f1 goes to d1. Uh, those four moves present like one of the most important ideas of Smith Mora. And let's get started. Uh, there are guys. Uh, most of the guys uh, play e6. Makes sense. Because if we intend to put our bishop on c4, and we definitely tend to do so, after we play bishop c4, uh, now this bishop is kind of weak because it's hitting the wall. Well, at first glance, it's like that. But unlike other openings where your bishop really stays weak for the rest of the game, here uh, the threat is going to be a little bit different. Um, the truth is going to be a little bit different because at some point we are ready to break this wall and we're ready to do it in a very unusual way by sacking the knight on d5. So I'm going to show you the guy who once again put this um, opening and the whole, uh, you know, like uh, gambit concept back into the fight. I'm talking about... Uh, Mark Ezerman, an I am from United States, who made a great book, uh, Meinheim de Mora, um, where he gave like lots of good ideas uh, for the Smith Mora gambit. So uh, let's go. After bishop c4, a6, you go short castle and they go knight g7. Uh, the following system is considered to be one of the hardest systems to break with black. Um, when black goes like this. So bishop g5 makes sense. Unlike other Smith Mora variations where the queen goes on e2 and rook on d1, here you play bishop g5 and you do not allow this knight to move to g6, not even to go anywhere else, but it usually goes on uh, at, uh, g6. They go f6 and you go back to e3. Uh, what is important about this f6 move? Uh, it has just made these uh, pawns weak, made your bishop a little bit better, and they seriously weaken the pawn structure. That's a good thing. When they play b5, you bring your bishop back 
always on b3. In Smith Mora, this bishop always goes back on b3. And they go knight g6. And from all the uh, games that I found and uh, found, you know, in Smith Mora Gambit and found important for this opening, I had to choose one in order to make this video attractive, but at the same time uh, to show you like a model game in these positions. And uh, who else uh, should play the game but the guy who uh, put it in the fashion? Um, so it's uh, Mark Hezerman played against uh, famous uh, Dutch GM uh, Van Valley. Hezerman played knight d5 and he immediately sacked the piece. Of course, everybody should take this piece, otherwise, this knight is gonna stand here forever and it's going to uh, do so many uh, nasty things. And the moment you're just threatening bishop b6 to trap the queen on d8. They gotta take, you take by pawn, and all of a sudden you are you're threatening knight on c6. You're you wanna play rook e1 afterwards, going after the king on e8, and you also have like a great uh, all of a sudden light square bishop along the diagonal we spoke previously. After knight e5, Hazerman plays d6, it makes perfect sense. He opens up the light square bishop and gets a great position. Bishop e7 takes on e5 and decides to open up the game and fight against possibly weak king with f4. Uh, and I really, really have to say that I like this move a lot. When Billy played queen f6, f takes and queen a5. And I believe that this is what he saw. And he probably said, okay, uh, I'm not threatening bishop with tempo. Uh, I just want to take on d6. Afterwards, I'm going to threaten on h2. This bishop on b7 does great. And I can't blame him. I cannot blame him for uh, this way of thinking because what happened after this uh, was absolutely shocking. Azerman played bishop g5. Take a look at this terrific move. Bishop g5, which prevents long castle, which, which threatens bishop f7 in one move. I was like shocked uh, when I analyzed this game because uh, I find this move extremely difficult, but also very attractive. So what's the point? If you take the move is queen a1, and if you go like in d8, queen a5, what a beautiful uh, maneuver with this queen. And if king c8, queen c7 is just checkmate, well, in case of king e8, you just have bishop f7 and it's made again. What a beautiful bishop g5 piece sacked. So uh, this guy went with a bishop e7 and after bishop f7, now everything went with check and tempo. He now plays queen d2 and with the bishop pair, uh, open uh, pieces. I really have to apologize for having this one. So uh, with the bishop pair, with uh, full activity of his pieces, this position really looks great for white. Also, king on d8 is weak. He just wants to play like rook a to d1, and white uh, looks completely winning. After like king c8, uh, played rook c1, knight c6. Of course, king b8, you just have like bishop f4. So after like knight c6, Azerman played rook to d1, threatening mate. Queen f5, bishop f4. Uh, doesn't care much about the bishop on f7. Playing queen d6 sets up this battery and when one well he tries now to escape in another way he sacrifices rook and after queen c6 won the game absolutely spectacular win by white and uh, i believe this guy is so proud first of all van Valley used to be 2700 player for so many years second thing he won in his favorite opening and in which way in the most beautiful fashion let's go with another thing Apart from e6, uh, these guys can go with g6, fifth move. Here you once again carry on in the typical fashion. Bishop c4, bishop g7, short castle, and they just go with knight f6. Don't worry. They can't play. Uh, they can't, uh, this guy went with the knight f6, and which, uh, and actually whose game I decided to show you. This is an interesting moment uh, for this gambit because... Uh, this gambit is called Smith Mora. Uh, there was a guy from Serbia, famous GM. His name is Milan Matulovic. And uh, that guy 
was one of the first guys and one of the guys who on regular basis apply this opening and for example if you live in Serbia and somebody asks you so what did you play he's just going to tell you Matulovic Gambit so uh, just because of this I just want to tell you uh, that uh, Americans and the other guys call this Gambit Smith Mora but you will see why this Gambit is named after Matulovic as well Take a look at his game. This guy played knight f6. Way better was d6, uh, in which case you just go with queen e2. Of course, that you can play bishop g4 because of famous trick. Bishop f7 followed by knight g5. It's a famous trick how to uh, win the on back and of course uh, win this bishop on g4 with a great game. So the guy went for the knight f6. Matulovic pushed his pawn up to e5, threatening knight on f6, knight g4. And once again, basically applied the same idea. He played bishop f7, played knight g5, uh, threatened both of these pieces after king e8, played queen g4. But to be honest, when I analyzed this game, it didn't look that obvious to me. Okay, he's down a pawn, but he now played uh, a very aggressive and at the same time, a little bit unexpected move. Queen a4. He threatens very nasty knight e6 with a double attack against the queen on d8 and the bishop on g7 after knight c6 went with the rook to d1 he doesn't want to allow this guy to complete his development also don't forget he can't play castle because he moved the king after queen a5 matulovic played queen b3 threatening queen f7 after queen f5 played knight b5 threatening knight c7 and uh, of course position was completely lost for uh, black who played bishop e5 to stop this another amazing move rook to d5 rook to d5 threatens now knight c7 obviously a fork is gonna happen well he can't do anything on the king's side to our king h6 matulovic played knight c7 brought the knight back first and after knight e5 played f4 winning a piece and of course already broken king couldn't defend himself and he resigned. This game was played in uh, Italy, in Napoli, like 1954, but you can now see uh, Matulovic's strength and how he actually understood this gambit. I analyzed like millions of his games and I really, really enjoyed the way he played uh, this opening. I'm going to show you one more of his games. Uh, also played it. Uh, in his favorite opening and you're just gonna see what happened there apart from e6 and g6 most of the guys go for d6 one day when I don't know you asked me to make a refutation of the Smith Mora a, a refutation not in that classical sense of that word there is no like clear refutation of this gambit uh, I'm just gonna show you like one of the systems that looks pretty good for black to go with against this opening so it's d6 and after bishop c4 there are like two options they have to play uh, e6 uh, or i teach my students to play a6 after a6 normal stuff is castle knight f6 queen e2 at once again followed by rook to d1 and trading this opening in the most classic fashion the thing is that after bishop c4 so many guys i found more than hundreds of games Play knight f6. It looks so logical. You remember that famous Laskia rule first develop your knights, then develop bishops. Uh, well, uh, don't you think that black in this opening uh, has just played according to all these basic rules? I believe it's just played it this way. But look what happens. You just break it with e5. This is a great move. Exclamation mark for this move. And all of a sudden, you see a little combination of these three pieces in Smith Mora. When they take, you take on d8. They can't take by king, of course, they gotta take by knight. And knight b5. I remember my friend uh, Branko Vučković. He, um, he's a great, uh, not just lover, but also a player of this gambit. And he played once at this gambit against somebody and made it the guy in the following way. This guy played king to d7 to stop knight c7. He played knight e5 told his opponent hey man put your king back what are you doing the guy put it back and da 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 knight c7 checkmate believe it or not what a nice meeting that and when i asked him 
did you make a draw? Come on, man, I, play, I played Matulovic Gambit. So after knight b5, this guy, uh, they, they usually go with the rook b8. Then you take on e5, e6, and castles. You're threatening on a7. You threaten knight c7 at some point. You want to play bishop e3. You have rook here. You have pressure on f7. King is kind of weak on e8. This is a great example of how inaccuracy and or actually uh, opening mistake can cost black in uh, this uh, Smith Moore or Matulovic Gambit. After bishop c4, I found like so many guys used to play e6. Uh, b6 is another a classic opening. And guys, by now, you should have learned like the most important ideas in, in this opening. So what should you play? Of course, it's queen e2. Queen e2 because we're just supporting the pawn on e4. So we want to break it with e5. But we want to do that after we play castle and put the rook on d1. Uh, by harassing this queen on d8 and doing the x rays after a6 castles queen c7 makes sense or even knight f6 it's pretty much the same you just go rook to d1 threatening e5 uh, this guy uh, with the black pieces first play queen c7 and after rook to d1 played knight f6 an important idea uh, is always bishop f4 trying to break in the center with e5 especially when the queen is on c7 at the same time your bishop on f4 doesn't only threaten to uh, push e5 pawn but also wants to play rook a c1 which is another important smith more idea because you want to bring your bishop back to b3 and jump with your knight on d5 in which case you would just take like the uh, biggest possible benefit of the rook on c1 and also, keeping this bishop in the diagonal a to g8, well, at the same time, you just want to jump with the knight on d5. Now, I'll show you two games. A game that I was absolutely fascinated with. The game uh, played by Grandmaster Pilavov. I believe that the guy is from Russia. And another game is a game by Matulovic. Matulovic opponent played more solid bishop e7. Matulovic played the most logical rook a c1. And once again, so watch out, out of four model games, I actually took two games of Matulovic, one of Mark Ezerman and this guy Pilavov. Where is Smith? Where is Mora? <laughs> I don't know where these guys. Anyways, after like rook a c1, you just want to bring your bishop back to b3 and play knight e5. After castles, you bring your bishop back to b3. This is what I told you previously. All Smith Mora guys know that they sh you should bring your rook on c1 bring your bishop back to b3 and jump with the knight on d5 when when the queen is on c7 why because you do the x-rays why else because you want to put the rook uh, and actually uh give your rook on c1 an open file why else because you want to make pressure against the knight on c6 so after rook d8 da -da -da -da, knight goes on g5 take a look at this you pressure the queen you pressure the knight Everything looks a little here by white. So after he takes d5, he takes d5. All of a sudden, they have lots of problems, uh, mainly thanks to the rook on c1. After h6, Matulovic captured. Jump with the knight on d4, threatening this pawn. And just when this, uh, this guy with the black pieces thought like, okay, at least my three pawn islands, I'm going to try to defend. Matulovic sacrificed on c6. Another beautiful move, played bishop a4, and after this took on c6. With the bishop here, with an ideally placed pawn, with only two pawn islands, uh, while your opponent has like three pawn islands, Matulovic managed to win this game relatively easy. And finally, I am about to show you like the most beautiful game in this uh, gambit. Uh, where Black played a move that I found in more than hundreds of games in this system. Because all these Smith Mora guys, they usually develop their pieces like this. And you just say, okay, he just wants to play ideally all his pieces this way. He just wants to break with e5. Let me set my knight on e5 and take advantage of the queen on c7 so he can do anything. What happened in this game is absolutely. Uh, not just fascinating, but actually um, 
much more than that. And uh, I'm so, so happy, excited and thrilled to show you the following one. He took by bishop. First of all, in a gambit to give up a bishop is a very risky decision. But he didn't do it just like that. Uh, he just opened up the d-file. And it's going to turn out to be very important. Now he played rook ac1, threatening very nasty knight b5. Uh, knight b5 would win the game on the spot, so the guy played queen c7. Uh, sorry, queen b8. Take, he takes like uh, precaution measures against this one. This guy plays knight b5. And not just that he plays knight b5, he threatens knight c7 because in case of queen c7, he would give check bishop b5 and by rook c7 win that queen. Uh, Polyakov, who's 2400 guy, Fide, played bishop d7. Another amazing move here. This is like advanced top level tactics. Rook takes d7. He's removing defender and forcing this guy to capture by queen. And another top level tactics. Bishop takes e6. He's sacrificing this bishop, threatening knight, but more importantly, he just wants to jump on c7. A very interesting line could be after a takes b5, but if you want to have some fun with calculation and tactics at home, feel free to find it by yourself. After f takes e6, played knight c7, and after queen e7, another slam mark move, queen c4. This is a great connectivity of the knight on c7 and queen on c4. Pawn on e6 seems to be weak. After king d8, played another knight that now jumps into the game, which threatens both knight f7 and knight e6. All of a sudden, this guy couldn't defend everything. And take a look at this position. We're down a pawn. Sorry, we're down a rook. But actually, all their most important pieces are in the back rank. Played knight c5, knight takes e6, took by queen, and now he threatened knight f7. Couldn't defend checkmate or serious material consequences, and he resigned the game. Guys, hope that you enjoyed this video on your one of your most favorite videos and openings, Smith Moore Matulovic Gambit. Uh, I'm gonna definitely enjoy my birthday, and once again, congratulations for Djokovic win against Nadal in Roland Garros. Thank you guys so much and see you soon. Bye-bye.